No question about it. A lifetime achievement indeed. And so, dear Maya, from your publisher and a lifelong friend, the warmest congratulations. Thank you, everybody. Imagine it. Imagine it. Imagine it. Amazing. When, when it looked like the sun, when it looked like the sun wasn't going to shine anymore, God put a rainbow in the clouds. Imagine that. In, in, a, in a Genesis, we are told that rain had persisted so unrelentingly that people thought it would never, it would never cease. And so in an attempt to put the people at ease, God put a rainbow in the sky. That was in Genesis. However, in the 19th century, some African-American poet, a lyricist, probably a woman, I'm not sure about that, said, <laughs> said God put the rainbow not just in the sky, but in the clouds. In the clouds themselves. There's a possibility we all know that suns and moons and stars and all sorts of illuminations are always in the, in the firmament. However, clouds can so lower and lower that people cannot see the possibility of, of hope. But if the, cloud, if, the, if the clouds have the rainbow right in, the, right in them, there's a possibility of seeing hope. Amazingly for me, Random House and Bob Loomis, they have been rainbows in my clouds. Imagine it. A black girl from a little village in Arkansas, smaller than this, this little town here, this little village. This, imagine it. Now considered one of the most important uh, writers. Imagine it. Random House and and Bob Loomis. Bob Loomis, told, I told him he wanted to talk to me about writing a book. I had, I had um, Martin Luther King had been killed on my birthday, April the 4th, and I, 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 I was so thrown by it because I'd agreed to come back to work for him. And I was so thrown that I couldn't stand it. And so, um, uh, uh, Bob, uh, well, first, James Baldwin came to my house and said, I want to take you somewhere. He took me to, to uh, Jules Piper's house. He said, you need to laugh. He took me to Jules Piper's house. And Jules and his, his wife, Judy at the time, and their daughter, they, they told stories. And I couldn't, I, I was so thrown by Martin's death. I couldn't, on my birthday, I couldn't talk. And then they talked about uh, the South and what, what was it like. And, and so I thought, well, I will tell one story. I told them, I said, you know, I grew up in a town so, so uh, prejudiced that they wouldn't let black people even eat vanilla ice cream. <laughs> uh, as a, uh, Judy Pfeiffer called Bob Loomis the next day and asked, do you know uh, this poet, Maya Angelou? And he said, I think I've heard of her. And he, she said, I think if you could get her to write a book, it might be important. So he called me. And I said, no, I, I'm sorry, I'm a poet, and, and I'm a, I don't write books. I don't write. He said, would you like, a, like to write a, an autobiography? I said, no, I don't do that. <laughs> and he said, OK. And then he called two or three times. And then I went out to California. I had written a television series for PBS. And he said, uh, he called again, three or four. And he said, Miss Angelo, it's probably just as well that you don't try to write a, an autobiography. Because writing autobiography as literature is almost impossible. 
I'm sure he talked to James Baldwin, who said, if you want to get Maya Angelou to do something, tell her she can't do it. Yeah. When Bob Loomis said to me, well, it's just as well you don't try it, because it's almost impossible. I said, well, <clears throat> I'll try. <laughs> I, I don't know what, what uh, edition Cage Bird is in. I don't know. But I do know that it is said to have been one of the most important books ever written. Imagine it. A black girl like this. Look at it. I mean, you have to, if, if you've been white all your life, <laughs> and you think you, 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 you're entitled, that's fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. But to have a friend, to have a, somebody who, who thinks, I think you can do it. It may not get better than this. I know that Bob Loomis has been my friend and brother friend and my editor for 40 years. And I'm grateful for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm appreciative. I thank you very much for giving me the honor of, uh, of the Norman Mailer Award. I'm, I'm grateful. I have loved Norman Mailer's writing. We have been at odds. <laughs> yes, we are at odds. I'm still at odds with Mr. Mailer. <laughs> however, however, he writes so well. <laughs> and I have been an admirer of, uh, of uh, Norman Mailer, James Baldwin, and, uh, and the wonder wonderful woman writer. I've, I've been, I'm a, a, I admire people who dare to take the language, English, and understand it, and understand the melody, and the, and the, and the, the incredible uh, music of the language. I love Joan Didion, because she speaks, she writes English. She writes it. Yes, I love it, and I'm grateful to have received this incredible award. Norman Mailer, if we had talked together, we would not agree. <laughs> However, on some things we agree. You take a few nouns and a few pronouns and nouns and adverbs and adjectives and put them together, ball them up and throw them against the ball and make them bounce. <laughs> That's what Norman Mailer did. That's what James Baldwin did, and Joan Didion did, and I do. That's what I mean to do. Thank you.